Hello everyone, welcome back to another update. Today's day is Friday 20th and um, yeah, we've got loads going on today guys. Let's get straight into this map. Um, I want to bring you on to something that happened about 16 hours ago because this information does change the dynamic of what's going on in the Middle East uh, drastically potentially. So let's go straight here. So this in the middle of the sea there, a US destroyer intercepted several missiles fired from Yemen. Not looking good. Now, it was reported that two to three missile fired by Houthis intercepted by USS Kearney, uh, possibly targeting the US warship or launched at another target. US Navy destroyer intercepted these missiles fired from Yemen um, yesterday. That was reported from the Department of Defense. This is the alleged area in which I think they think um, the missiles were shot from. It's um, stated that US officials confirmed to ABC that US Navy destroyer, USS Kearney, actually shot down these missiles um, last night. They were not aimed at the ship, apparently, but headed in a northerly direction. So, yeah, this is escalating things, and we don't want to escalate it with America, okay? They've, um, as much as people want to say this, that, and the other about the American military, that they're woke, that they're not as strong as they used to be, even if all of that's true, America's still, you know, the most formidable fighting force to be dealing with on this planet right now. And that's a fact. So they've just got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff and a lot of determined young people working for them as well. This is um, not something that I would be wanting to happen because this escalates things drastically. If we zoom out here, okay, just in the Middle East in general, look at all of this activity among this network. There's an awful lot happening right now. And this is the key thing to remember within this whole area. It was only last week that we had a few things happening within the um, Israeli Tel Aviv area. Now, if we go back out on that, we can see all of this activity within the Middle East from Jordan to Syria to Iraq. You know, it's, it's happening, guys. It's happening everywhere. And I think this map within the next few weeks and months is going to be bombarded with activity as well. Hopefully not. I am skeptical, but uh, I think it's going to, this is going to lead into something a lot bigger, guys. I, I truly believe that. But uh, who am I? Anyway, let me know in the comments if you agree with what I'm saying within that statement. Let's zoom into this then. So, as of 34 minutes ago, the bodies of a number of dead were recovered after the bombing of a house in the Yarmouk neighbourhood in Gaza City. The bombing continues within Gaza City. This place must be like an absolute um, scrapyard now, guys. The amount of strikes that's happened towards Gaza is unprecedented, OK? They, it's just... Is it proportionate to what is being received on the other side? I don't think so. I think the amount of bombing that's taken place within Gaza is absolutely crazy. Not every Palestinian belongs to Hamas, for one. So, you know, is it is it right and is it virtuous? Is it is it is it the right thing to destroy the entirety of Gaza through missile strikes and raids? I don't think it is, troops. Now, Iran's top military commander had a phone call with Turkey Defence Minister saying the United States support for Israel's attacks on Gaza and sending arms further complicates the situation. He called for serious action to prevent the continued attacks on civilians in Gaza. It needs to, it needs to stop. Israeli armies targeting the perimeter of a barbed wire fence in Wadi Hunin during the enemy expressed uh, pursuing a fighter who infiltrated the Margulot settlement and shot a soldier. So we've got, as we can see, this perimeter fence here, um, which is annotated as a red line, effectively. Um, on the left, you can see we've got um, quite a different setting to what's on the right. We've got a lot of greenery on the right-hand side as well. Um, just to the right of that, we've got Khan News reporting a security incident on the northern border. That'll be the same incident they're talking about. A terrorist may have infiltrated, shot a security guard and escaped the scene. The Israeli army is searching the area. A little bit further um, to the right of that, about 500 feet or so, It was um, that's where the initial reports actually came from. So this whole area is a, a scene of, um, you know, of, of violence. And this only happened or was reported to be um, uh, about an hour ago, guys. Okay, but yeah, there's woodland here. Why is this an area that you'd probably think um, this is happening? 
Well, this perimeter fence is um, is monitored with CCTV and checkpoints and guards and outposts and all of that. So if you think about it, logically speaking, if you want to get into the other country, you want to be not seen, you want to be not heard. So there's a woodland adjacent to this and there's a main road. There's not that much happening in terms of settlements and buildings here. So this would be an obvious place to go through, okay? And said, if you go further north, you can see that this area here has got a town and stuff. So you bet your bottom dollar there's some form of military presence or security presence along these areas so that doesn't make sense to be able to go there just a little bit of tactical insight there guys now egypt is about to finish road repairs on the palestinian side of the rafa border crossing to allow trucks loaded with aid to enter gaza on the egyptian side of rafa crossing more than 175 trucks have been loaded with humanitarian aid still waiting to cross into gaza now we knew very early on there was a lot of tunnels in rafa um a lot of these tunnels were used to effectively allow um, the terrorists to get um, personnel kit and equipment across the border. That's what those tunnels are used for, and I believe it was um, it was made public that a lot of these tunnels were targeted and taken out by the IDF. That was done, um, that was successful, but in the process, they must have um, destroyed a lot of the road systems theirs as well, which um, doesn't allow for the safe passage and effective passage of humanitarian aid, which should be allowed to go through to that um, country, irrespective um, of, of what people may think. Now, the argument against that is people are saying, well, you know, it's obviously going to get into the hands of the uh, of Hamas, of, uh, of the terrorist cells, um, which I understand that point, okay? That is a good point, but effective aid should be given to the people that need it um the civilians on the ground who have nothing to do with these terrorist organizations the innocent elderly and children should should be getting um humanitarian aid guys okay the who what ifs and whens it's irrelevant really this aid needs to get across and needs to get across fast as far as i'm concerned but what do i know what do i care um united nations the first aid shipment is expected to enter gaza in the next two days so i'm guessing that's with regards um hopeful passage of this aid um and, and hopefully the roads get um get fixed in, in in quick time guys indonesian foreign minister we noticed every single day we've got a different foreign minister from around the world um expressing their concern the gulf states and asian support um, the two-state solution in Palestine. Indonesian foreign minister also says the Gulf leaders support a peaceful solution in Palestine. Everyone supports a peaceful solution um, on paper, but do they actually really support a peaceful solution um, on the ground? Different, different story, isn't it? The Israeli army, the date of entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza through the Rafah crossing will be determined. Palestinian health, um, 13 dead including five children after Israeli forces storm North Shamps camp in the Northwest Bank. So we've seen this yesterday. This is only two hours ago that we've got this information coming in. Yesterday, there was a, um, a, a raid, so to speak, um, a, a, an operation in the North Shamps refugee camp. This um, took about 10 hours, okay? So I'm just gonna zoom in where the hand is annotated. The fighting started in around here, okay? And you can see the Kashaw Market is right adjacent to this camp. The fighting started here, and um, the security forces were met with, um, with, with terrorists, basically. And around about 10 Israeli soldiers were killed in this operation as they were pushing eastward into the Nurse Arms refugee camp um, to only have five, I believe, five people injured on their behalf, but two um, key people were arrested but it took a lot it took a lot of um toll you know it took 10 deaths and 10 injured i believe from the um, israeli side to be able to secure this area and get the people that they wanted so two hours ago it's been uh, confirmed that 13 dead including five children after the israeli forces stormed this camp in the west bank whether or not that's a new um uh, operation i don't think it is i think they're referring to what happened yesterday 13 dead five children I mean, you can't just go around shooting kids, so five's quite a lot in 13 deads, you know, seven of those adults, half, nearly half of them were children, so, yeah, I mean, that's terrible, that's absolutely terrible, you can't, I don't know, small arms fire, when you, when you start, when you're clearing through buildings and stuff like that, okay, you, 
clearing through buildings, which obviously there is refugee camps here. You're going in, you're, you're stacking up, you, you've got your front man, you understand the targets that you're going for. You can understand very, very quickly if it's an adult or if it's a child, okay? Determine, right? Mother, child, right? Right, next one. Enemy, weapon system, bang, slot. It, it, or it looks like this. You're just going into buildings, bang, 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 bang. Oh, that was a woman, or that was a kid, or that was an, anim an enemy. Okay, so there's two ways you can do it. You can do it and um, you can respect the weapon system that you've got. You can go in there with the idea that your job is not to kill people, okay? Your job is to get the suspects, the people that you want, um, and if they're sure that they are armed and they are a threat, then you obviously have to defend yourself and secure your life, but you're not under no threat with the kids, guys. So this is the bit that I find um, appalling. This might be a little bit of information, but I'm extracting from it, you know, based on military experience and stuff, that type of information. Half of the people that you've just killed is um, is children. That doesn't that that's a that's a bit too much for me. Okay, that's a massive failing. Okay, B based on the information I've just said, I'm not going to give any more conclusions on that. I'll let you make your own decision up. Israeli bombing of various sites in the Gaza Strip, uh, right next to a Gaza war cemetery. Actually, ironically, eh? So we've got um, a park to the um, northwest of that. We've got one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight places of worship all in this vicinity. And we're talking, you know, two, four, six, eight. We're talking in around 1,500 metres, so not an awful lot of space here, guys. And this is continuing. All of these areas have been absolutely bombarded. Everyone is a potential um, victim of all of these bombings. Good, bad, indifferent. No, no one's going to escape um, the unfortunate uh, mess of war. In this case, it seems... Uh, Indonesian Foreign Minister, Asian Gulf Summit leaders expressed concern about the escalation of violence in Gaza. Saudi Foreign Minister says he stressed the importance of a ceasefire in Gaza and the entry of humanitarian aid. This is a no-brainer. It should happen straight away. Humanitarian aid should be given um, basic amenities, food, water, medicine. Done, all right? It's done. You've done your job. Tick in the box. As much as you dislike or you are for, this, this should be happening, irrespective, okay? Everyone, everyone, everyone deserves um, the right to medical treatment and aid. If you look under... Um, Card Alpha when the lads, the British guy certainly in Afghanistan, um, I'll give you a little understanding of how it worked. So you can be fighting um, the enemy, okay, and you injure, wound, or maim a person. He lays his weapon system down. He's no longer a threat to you. You push on through to fight the other enemy combatants. That person lying on the floor who was fighting, trying to kill you two seconds ago, who's now seriously injured but isn't dead, requires aid. You bloody well give him it after the firefight's done, okay? And the British soldiers did that, oh yeah? The British did that. That's what we're all about. Granted, it didn't always happen, and there's a famous story about a certain marine who um who was caught up in the unfortunate um her horrific nature of war all right um it, you know you'll help you'll be held accountable to that this isn't happening in in gaza because they don't follow the same rules with us even israel okay when you think about the rules of war that we are subject to and i think it's the right thing to do he's no longer a threat to you he's dying yeah give the guy aid okay get him out of there i know people might not be able to get their head around that but that's just the way i think it should be done it's the it's just the way it should be done not always is done, not always easy to do it. Granted, the situations can be terrible on the ground. Now, the Saudi Crown Prince uh, conditions must be created for the return of stability, a just solution, and the establishment of a Palestinian state on the 1967 border. Um, a just solution and the establishment of a Palestinian state. Yeah, this is always going to be an argument, all right, guys? This is always going to be a problem. I think the two-state solution is just going to be... Um, it, it's... I just don't see it working. I just don't see it working. I don't think there's a global need or want for it to work. I think they're happy. The people in charge of this bloody world are happy with um, what's going on, I think. I think they want this to be... Um, it creates money for the arms industry, doesn't it? Let's face it. Simple as that. Palestinian Red Crescent. A young Palestinian man was seriously injured by the gunfire from forces in the town of Betweena, um, west of Ramallah. Um, destruction that Belfell residence tower in the city of Al Zara in the middle of the Gaza Strip as a result of the bombing by warplanes. Look at that. That's just one bombing by a warplane. Absolute utter destruction, guys. And this is happening all over the bloody place there. Uh, happening all over the place. Look, look at these pictures. This is crazy. Absolute dust. Years, 
if not decades, to sort out. In fact, it might never get rebuilt with the war raging on, the conflict raging on. Look. Hideous. Absolutely hideous. Alomari Mosque has been targeted and destroyed in uh, northern Gaza. Zoom in here. Let me see that. There's lots of places of worship around here. Um, <laughs> Alomari Mosque has been targeted and destroyed. So let's get into this. So this mosque in question, I don't have the information on it, but I'm just going to explain to you just because, it's something, you know, we, we try and play it right down the line here, okay, in terms of fairness. Um, it has happened in the past. It, 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 is, it is knowledge to, um, it is public knowledge somewhat that, not just in this case, but in cases all over the globe, that places of worship have been um, found to harbour terrorists, weaponry and munitions to be able to operate and fight from that location um, without detection. That's why, or at least that's the excuse of why these areas are being targeted. Now, we've got a moral stance on this, a moral question. Is it right, even with the knowledge that there's weaponry within these places that you target places of worship. This is the question, guys. I don't know the answer to that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw something out there and say, I don't think this should be targeted, but at the same time, I do not agree with storing weaponry and munitions and, um, and terrorism within these places either. But the type of people that's doing this, putting certain people under massive amounts of pressure, possibly with their lives at risk, do you blame this happening in the first place? I don't know what the answer is to stop it from happening for this harbouring of equipment and stuff, but that's why they're, I believe, being targeted anyway. Um, but I might be massively wrong on that one. Let me know in the chat what you think. Israel is evacuating the city of Kiryat Shomona, 20,000 people on its northern border with Lebanon. Loads of activity there. So... This is a, they're evacuating this city. In fact, they're evacuating this city. Originally, it was a 2.5 kilometer exclusion zone. So this city itself, let's go to the right hand side of the city, is that's well over four kilometers. So that exclusion zone has effectively been doubled um, just for this area here. Yeah, we're looking at about just over four kilometres there. The original exclusion zone was uh, just, well, it just fell short of the actual city looked about like this loads of green woodland and stuff not many settlements in around there but the main focus is all of this in fact the northern part of this city extends out to five nearly five and a bit kilometers so this old place is getting um, evacuated now um, apparently telegram started blocking some palestinian channels including hamas official channel well, yeah, I mean, that should be blocked. Terrorist organization. al Qazam Brigade, we bombed Sadat with a missile barrage. Overnight, the concrete barriers at Rafah Crossing were removed. Rumors across social media are suggesting the crossing will indeed open today after Portis discussed earlier this week. However, nothing official from the crossing authorities has been issued. Loads of activity there, guys, but um, they, can't, they can't seem to get the aid through. That's the problem. An apartment unit in Castle Towers has been targeted to Deir el Bala, central Gaza. Um, and you can see there's been a number of strikes happening there. Uh, eight hours ago, airplanes were attacking the uh, Palestinian tower. Um, 16 hours ago, the Ministry of the Interior in Gaza, 10 people have actually been killed in this area and others seriously injured uh, during that targeted bombing campaign. A residential building was uh, attacked. So this whole strip here, it's just absolutely destroying the place, aren't they? Um, reports that two to three missiles fired by Houthis intercepted by the USS Kearney. Um, it says possibly targeting the US warship here, but in another source it says that the uh, missiles were going north. Um, so, yeah, there's conflicting um, narrative on that, conflicting information. But, you know, thankfully, well, let's, let's just put it this way. Those missiles were going north. Hell of a long way to be able to reach Jordan. I don't think they're capable, they're capable of doing that from Yemen, are they? Possibly not. Let's just go with no. So, yeah, it makes sense that they were... Maybe it's a warning shot to the USS warships. I don't know. Um, a direct threat to that would be a declaration of war, wouldn't it? You know, so let's just say that. Talking about the United States, US intelligence access is the number of people killed um, 
in the explosion that the Ali Arab hospital in Gaza is one to 300 people with the number of the lower end of the scale, a US official and a person familiar with the report. So that hospital um, that was targeted, suspected that is around about 100, possibly up to 300 people. I don't know how you can get a bracket of 100 to 300 people. All right, you, you get uh, that, that. That's like me. I, c I could just say now I could be could be fifty to two hundred and fifty. It's like let's just go with around a hundred people. Still a hundred people too many. Absolutely disgu disgusting, guys. Okay, so we're about. 20 minutes in, guys. I like to keep these about 20 minutes long. Um, if you want more of these throughout the days, so we're not going far back as like 16 hours or so, I can do multiple ones of these per day. Please like the video, share it out far and wide. Um, we need to get more traction on these videos if we can. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And um, thanks for supporting me. If you want to support me further, join the Patreon in the link below or just become a member of the channel. It's quite easy. I think memberships are only a pound. Um, so when we do the live chats and stuff like that, we're members only, you guys will have access. Anyway, wherever you are, thanks, guys. See ya.